This is an exciting and sobering day for ADL. As an organization established in the United States more than 100 years ago with a mandate to counteract anti-Semitism and all forms of bigotry and prejudice, we have long been deeply concerned with the prevalence in this country of anti-Semitic attitudes. Now, while continuing our mission here, we enter our second century with an important new effort to gather empirical data on the level of anti-Semitic attitudes around the world and a commitment by our leadership to provide data in order to quantify and better understand the extent of anti-Jewish beliefs and attitudes globally. In our centennial year this past year, we said everywhere we went that we were imagining a world without hate. As we begin our second century, we are working towards building a world without hate. And this is an important step in that process. Now, I would like to introduce ADL's National Director, Abe Foxman, to get us started with some remarks on the survey. Abe? Thank you, Barry. Good morning. Um, the Anti-Defamation League was founded in 1913, as you know, to combat anti-Semitism. But even at that time, we took upon ourselves the responsibility to stand up against all forms of bigotry. But the primary purpose of the organization then and to this day was the struggle against anti-Semitism. In those early decades, ADL's focus was on the United States, where discrimination and bigotry against Jews were real and present. It was only in the 1950s and 1960s, coinciding with America's ascendancy as a leader of the free world, that the ADL expanded its mandate to address anti-Semitism around the world. This evolution was mirrored by how we used one of the most important vehicles to monitor anti-Semitism, public opinion polls. Our polling in America began in 1964 and continues to this day as a critical tool for understanding what is going on in this country. About 15 years ago, we decided to expand our public opinion polling to Europe and then then along came an individual, Leonard Stern, who shared our dream of doing a global comprehensive survey of attitudes towards Jews. Because of Mr. Stern's financial generosity and determination of the ADL leadership, we are here today. Um, we are here to try to measure the level of anti-Semitism to go beyond the anecdote and the story. It has long been a focus of the ADL that anti-Semitism, while sharing characteristics with other forms of prejudice, has a history of unique manifestations, including the realities of the critique of the Jews from both the left and the right, the existence of anti-Semitism in countries with or without Jews, the different geographical distribution of anti-Semitism and its appearance in a host of different religious environments. As Barry indicated to you, this is an important moment in the history of our organization. The release today of ADL's Global 100 Index on Anti-Semitism, the broadest public opinion survey of attitudes towards Jews ever conducted is one of the most significant initiatives we have undertaken in our long history. The survey took place in 102 countries and territories. Interviews were held with more than 53,000 people around the world, representing 4 billion individuals. We approached this project with a sense of pride, but also with a sense of humility knowing that it provides direction rather than definitive answers. The ADL Global 100 
will form a baseline for further considerations of anti-Semitism, Holocaust awareness, and other attitudes relating to the Jewish people and the Jewish community. Most importantly, the survey we trust will generate conversations among governments, scholars, NGOs, and others around the world on the whys and wherefores of attitudes towards Jews and lead to new initiatives to countries about these pernicious attitudes. I've already had a response from the Prime Minister of Greece, who had learned of the, our findings, requesting that we come and visit, discuss the poll, and to build together an approach to counter the anti-Semitism in his country. Our findings are sobering, but sadly not surprising. More than one quarter of the people surveyed, 26% or over 1 billion adults today harbor anti-Semitic attitudes. Okay. The most persistent stereotypes about Jews receiving the most support worldwide were those that generate dangerous political anti-Semitism. Those questioning the loyalty of Jews, 41%, and those exerting excessive Jewish power and influence, 35%. And after decades of efforts to promote Holocaust awareness, the good news is that 54% heard of the Holocaust. The bad news is that 32% believe that it is either a myth or has been greatly exaggerated. A survey indicates that region tends to be a stronger factor than religion in determining anti-Semitic factors. However, when it comes to religious factors affecting anti-Semitic attitudes, those who are Muslims overall have significantly higher anti-Semitic attitudes than other religions. Among all the religious groups tested, Muslims have the highest average index score of 49% as compared, for example, to Christians with 24. Even if we only look at the countries outside the Middle East and North Africa, the numbers for anti-Semitic attitudes for Muslims are still higher than those among Christians. Still, I would say all in all, the most disturbing finding was that four out of 10 people around the world question the loyalty of Jews in their own countries, question the trust that they have in their Jewish citizens. Finally, I'd like to point out that there was some good news. First is that 74% are either free from anti-Semitism or are not seriously infected. There were a number of countries, some in Asia, some in Europe, in which anti-Semitic attitudes were nearly absent or quite low. And in general, the number for English-speaking countries were significantly below those of the rest of the world. Before turning it over to Jeff for further analysis, I want to point out um, on the issue of the relationship of anti-Zionism, anti-Israel to anti-Semitism. It is clear from our survey, it is very evident that the Middle East conflict matters. It matters with regard to anti-Semitism. However, from our findings in the survey, it just is not clear whether the Middle East conflict is the cause or the excuse for anti-Semitism. And even though most of us or many of us believe that anti-Israel attitudes impact on anti-Semitism, there is no statistical data at this moment to support causality. In summary, after conducting this public opinion research in over 100 countries around the world, in places as diverse as Cameroon, Guatemala, South Korea, in predominantly Muslim countries and in predominantly Hindu countries, in places with Jews 
and others without Jews in the developed world and in the developing world, one thing sadly is true. Beliefs in anti-Semitic stereotypes are prevalent in society almost everywhere. While there may be very little in common between many of the countries surveyed, data clearly indicates that classic anti-Semitic canards define national, regional, religious, economic, and cultural boundaries. Uh, finally, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the hard work of Zeb First and Joe Swartz of First International Resources, with whom we have worked for many years, including on our earlier surveys of Jewish attitudes in Europe. Much of the information you have in front of you, or will hear in a few moments, are the result of their hard work and expertise. Zeb and Joe, thank you again for your tireless efforts to see this poll through to completion. And now I'd like to call on Jeff List to take us through the major findings and to answer your questions on methodology, et cetera. Thank you. So, thank you, Abe. Thank you, Barry. You'll see, as uh, Abe mentioned, that we conducted 53,100 interviews but there was a lot of work to, uh, to get to that point. With Mr. Stern's generous support, uh, ADL worked with FIR. Uh, we partnered with them to help with data collection and, uh, and analysis on the survey. And we conducted interviews between July of 2013 and February of 2014. There were two waves of the survey, one in the summer of 2013 and one in the fall uh, stretching into the, uh, into the winter. And obviously in fielding these, we had to take into account uh, religious holidays, political events, in some cases weather-related events. But we were generally very fortunate in the, uh, in the fielding of such a massive survey. The expected margin of sampling error for the global results that we'll be discussing is 0.97%. When we talk about country-specific results, most of the countries uh, included 500 interviews each with a margin of sampling error of plus or minus 4.4%. Uh, there were some countries that had 1,000 interviews, uh, and for those, the margin of sampling error is plus or minus 3.2%. These interviews were conducted uh, with the methodology that was appropriate to each country, varying from face-to-face -face interviews to surveying on a combination of landlines and uh, cell phones. The interviews were conducted in 96 languages, which included a lot of dialects and pidgin versions of languages, as well as uh, region-specific versions of, uh, of languages. For the regional and global numbers that you'll see here, we weighted the data by population so that uh, the adult population of the, uh, of the countries was represented proportionately in, uh, in providing a weighted result. Throughout the uh, presentation, we'll talk about numbers in seven regions, the Americas, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, uh, the Middle East, and North Africa, which we will sometimes refer to as MENA, or M-E-N-A, in an abbreviation in the, uh, in the deck, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, Asia, and Oceania. You'll see that the surveys included countries with populations of almost 6 billion total people, which is 85.9% of the world's population, and adult populations in these countries of over 4.1 billion people, 88.4% of the, uh, the world's adult population. These surveys were all conducted among adults 18 and over. The countries that we included uh, comprise 96.9% of the world's GDP, and we did interviews in nine of the 10 largest countries in the world in terms of population. The only one of the uh, 10 largest that was not included was Pakistan, and if you go to the 20 largest countries in the world, the only other country that was not included was the Democratic Republic of the Congo, which was a conflict zone at the time. We created index scores 
for these countries and for the world in regional averages based on a series of 11 stereotypes about Jews. Respondents were asked if each of these statements was probably true or probably false. And the index scores that you'll see represent agreement with a majority, six of the 11 stereotypes, including Jews are more loyal to Israel than to the country or the countries they live in. Uh, the, that question was asked slightly differently depending on whether or not the country had a significant Jewish population. And as Abe mentioned, 41% agreed with that. It was the highest of all the index statements. Uh, followed by Jews have too much power in the business world. Jews have too much power in international financial markets. Jews think they are better than other people. Jews don't care about what happens to anyone other than their own kind. People hate Jews because of the way Jews behave. Jews still talk too much about what happened to them in the Holocaust. Jews have too much control over global affairs. Jews have too much control over the United States government. Jews have too much control over the global media. And Jews are responsible for most of the world's wars. So as Abe mentioned, the ADL's Global 100 Index score is 26%, representing 26% in the countries surveyed who agreed with a majority, six out of the 11 stereotypes. That translates to 1.09 billion people worldwide. Uh, the average index scores varied by region, with the highest in the Middle East and North Africa at 74%, followed by Western, I'm sorry, Eastern Europe at 34%, Western Europe at 24%, Sub-Saharan Africa at 23%, Asia at 22%, the Americas at 19%, and Oceania at 14%. Also, as Abe mentioned, the, uh, the average index score in English-speaking countries at 13% was lower than the 26% uh, the global average. Just as a, uh, a point of comparison, in Spanish-speaking countries, the, uh, the number was 30%. You'll be able to find on the website index scores for each individual country. I won't uh, belabor these here. This slide shows the, uh, the 50 highest. I would point out just a few minor things on this, uh, on this slide. Abe mentioned uh, Greece. Greece at 69% has the highest index score outside of the Middle East and uh, North Africa. Also Iran at 56% uh, has the lowest index score in the Middle East and uh, North Africa. These are the, uh, the second 50. Again, I won't, uh, won't run through all of them because these, uh, these data are on the website. Uh, I would just mention that the United States at 9% uh, has one of the lowest index scores of the uh, countries we measured. The, uh, the stereotypes that were most prevalent region by region varied. The most common, though, in five of the seven regions was that Jews are more loyal to Israel than to this country. Uh, that was wi most widely accepted in Western Europe at 45%, Oceania at 41%, Sub-Saharan Africa at 40 the Americas at 38 and Asia at 37 you had a different index uh, statement that was highest in Eastern Europe. Jews have too much power in the business world. Uh, that was at 53%, probably true. And in the Middle East and North Africa, you had uh, a tie at 75% uh, with people hate Jews because of the way Jews behave, and 74% Jews are more loyal to Israel than to this country or the countries they, uh, they live in. As Abe mentioned, Region tends to be a stronger factor in anti-Semitism than, uh, than religion. While you do have 49% of Muslims worldwide who agree with a majority six of the 11 index statements, there are significant region, regional distinctions. And as you'll see at the bottom of this slide, uh, you can compare the average regional index scores among Muslims. MENA uh, Muslims are at 75% on the index compared to Muslims in Asia who are at 37%, Muslims in Western Europe at 29%, Eastern Europe at 20 and Sub-Saharan Africa at 18 The uh, the, combined re the combined index score for Muslims outside of MENA is 34%. So while, uh, while that's higher than the global average, it's, um, it's lower than, for example, the index score for Christians in MENA. Uh, who are at 64%. And you'll also see on this slide that the index score for Christians in the Middle East is significantly higher than the index score for Christians in other regions. 
One of the things that I find most interesting on the uh, website is the ability to compare country results easily. And uh, we picked out some of the findings here that we found interesting. You'll see that Iran, as I mentioned earlier, has the lowest index score in the Middle East at 56%. That's an index score that's more similar to Armenia at 58% than it is to a lot of the other countries in the Middle East and North Africa. You'll see Thailand on the website with an index score of just 13% compared to Malaysia with an index score at 61% even though they have a common border. France has one of the highest index scores in Western Europe at 37%. Uh, Greece at 69% has the highest index score outside of the Middle East. And Northern European countries tend to have low index scores, such as Sweden at uh, 4%, the Netherlands at 5%, Denmark at 9%, and Norway at 15%. There's very little anti-Semitism in Laos, the Philippines, and Vietnam. And another piece of interesting news was that the Czech Republic is well below the average for Eastern Europe, which is 34%. The Czech Republic is at 13%. Uh, we only interviewed people in two predominantly Hindu countries, Mauritius and India. You'll see Mauritius at 44% has a significantly higher index score than India at 20%. So it's worth noting that the concentration of Hindus is higher in India than it is in Mauritius. Uh, Panama at 52% has the highest index score in the Americas, 11 points higher than uh, Colombia or the Dominican Republic. You also see in looking at the Asian numbers, uh, South Korea at 53% has uh, one of the highest index scores in East Asia, uh, behind Malaysia at 61%, but ahead of Indonesia at 48%. And again, one of the tools that I think is most interesting on the website is the ability to compare countries or regions side by side on a host of measures very easily. We asked respondents how often they interacted with, uh, with Jews. Of the 74% who have never met a Jewish person, 25% still harbor anti-Semitic attitudes. Of the 26% who agreed with a majority of the uh, anti-Semitic stereotypes tested, 70% of them have never met a Jew. And this goes back to, uh, to Abe's point earlier, that anti-Semitism is truly a global phenomenon. We also asked questions about the Holocaust. As Abe mentioned earlier, 54% say that they have heard of the Holocaust. 35% say that they have never heard of the Holocaust. And there was greater awareness among older people, uh, with 61% of people 50 and older saying that they had heard of the Holocaust, compared with 48% of people under 35. So uh, greater awareness among older audiences than younger audiences. But I think this is an important point. We asked the follow-up question uh, after asking whether or not they had heard of the Holocaust. We asked whether or not they felt that it had been fairly described by history, whether or not it was a myth, or whether or not they thought that the number of Jews who died had been greatly exaggerated. And when you combine those two questions, only 33% in this survey both have heard of the Holocaust and believe that it's been fairly described by history. And you'll see uh, relatively high uh, awareness and acceptance in Oceania, Western Europe, and Eastern Europe, uh, and relatively low, uh, a relatively low combination of awareness and acceptance in Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa, and the Middle East and North Africa. Among the people who have heard of the Holocaust, 32% believe that it is either a myth or has been greatly exaggerated. And here also you can see by region uh, how, this, uh, how this varies with the highest percentage who say that the Holocaust was a myth or greatly exaggerated in the Middle East, followed by Sub-Saharan Africa and, uh, and Asia. We looked with regression analysis at uh, factors that predict anti-Semitic views You'll see these reflected in some of the numbers on this slide. Uh, age has an impact on anti-Semitism, as ADL has found in its previous research. Among people over 65, 34% harbored anti-Semitic attitudes. Among those under 65, 25% harbored anti-Semitic attitudes. Uh, familiarity, to some extent, was also an important factor. We looked at the countries that have a significant Jewish population versus countries that don't. And in the countries that have a larger Jewish population, the index scores at 22% were lower than they were in countries that do not, at uh, 
Education also had an impact, although that impact varied by, by region. In the West, including the Americas, Eastern Europe, and Oceania, people with more years of education tended to harbor fewer anti-Semitic attitudes. In the Middle East and North Africa, people with more years of education tended to harbor more anti-Semitic attitudes. Uh, overestimating the global Jewish population was also a factor. Uh, among the people who believed that Jews comprise more than 10% of the world's population, 38% harbored anti-Semitic attitudes, compared to 28% of people who believed that the Jewish population was 1% or less of the world. So, uh, again, for more information, you can go to uh, global100.adl.org. The uh, hashtag on Twitter is uh, ADLglobal100. And, uh, and with that, I think we'll open it up for questions. Question here. Um, Michael Astor of the Associated Press. Um, at any point in this survey, were people asked whether they considered themselves to be anti-Semitic? I mean, or is it just from these 11 questions that the criteria was decided? And how was that criteria decided that this was, that six out of 11 was sufficient to determine the... Uh... Mm -hmm. So, uh, people... People were not asked whether or not they consider themselves to be anti-Semitic, although they were separately asked, and you'll find these numbers on the website, whether or not they have a favorable or unfavorable opinion towards Jews. And in many cases, harboring anti-Semitic attitudes, as defined by agreeing with six out of the 11 stereotypes tested, was different than whether or not people stated that they had a favorable or unfavorable impression. These index statements are based on a series of questions that ADL has been asking for over 50 years now, uh, originally designed to get at a variety of different kinds of anti-Semitism. Uh, the original study that, that the survey was based on had identified stereotypes of Jews as such things as moneyed, clannish, uh, power-hungry, uh, controlling, prideful, and so you'll see a variety of statements. And, and anti-Semitism can mean different things in different places, which is why we didn't want to set the bar for, for harboring anti-Semitic attitudes at only a few of these and wanted to make sure that we defined it as agreeing with a majority of the six, uh, six out of the 11. We also, uh, we also find that, that bigots don't believe that they are bigots. It means you ask people, are you favorable? And they say, yeah, and, you know, some of my best friends are Jews. However, then you ask them about some of the stereotypes and they believe them and support them. So, you know, the fact, your self-image, um, even there's also the sophistication of knowing to say, what to say to, to an interviewer. But then when you ask specific questions, the bigotry surfaces. Michael Tuchfeld, Makor Ishon, Israel. I would like to ask two questions. Number one, do you have any data that, com that, in, uh, that compare these findings with former uh, uh, surveys you have made about anti-Semitism? Is it growth, is it going down, up? We didn't hear anything about it. And the second question is, I doubt why is the question of the l being loyal to Israel more than the country that you live in considered anti-Semitic? Anti mm -hmm. I find it hard to, because if I think as an Israeli, if an Amer I ask an American in Israel, who is he loyal to more, to America or to Israel? And he says, America said, okay, I don't hate you for that. Why is it anti-Semitic? Right, first, your first question is, um, there is no comparable data because this is the first time uh, that such a broad um, poll has been undertaken, 100 countries at the same time, more or less at the same time, with the same data, et cetera. There are some comparisons uh, to polls that were taken individually. We've taken polls um, in European countries, we've taken polls in the US, so you can find um, some of the comparisons to see. In the US, for example, when we started in the 60s, uh, the index in the United States on, uh, in terms of anti-Semitism was about 30%. Today, we're talking about nine or 10. Uh, you can compare Europe, we have that, you can, you can uh, get it on our website. Um, we, we used to do it every 18 months or two years. But globally, there's no such thing. This will establish a database, uh, which hopefully the next time we'll be able to compare uh, what it was like and whether it's changing. Your, your second question is, um, um, 
the canard, the charge, the stereotype, the Jews can't be trusted, that they can't be trusted as citizens, they can't be just as, the whole conspiracy theory of Jews is the Jews lust for power, lust for control, that's the conspiracy of uh, the protocols, um, it's why Jews have been expelled throughout history, uh, they, they weren't loyal, you know, they weren't loyal in terms of the states who were Christian. They weren't loyal in states that were Muslim. Loyalty is a basic canard directed against the Jews that you cannot trust them. They only care about themselves. They're only interested in themselves at the expense of. Um, <laughs> look, at, look at Nazi Germany. Um, Hitler started not with Aryan supremacy and not with the master race. He started how the Jews sold out Germany for money and for their own interest. So this is a canard that's been part, unfortunately, of the history of anti-Semitism, and we've paid a dear price. Um, it is, I will say to you, it is surprising that in the year 2014, this is the number one canard, but it's closely tied to the others. The Jews control. They control media, they control the United States, they control um, uh, finances, all for the purpose of doing for themselves at the cost of others. So it's a very clear anti-Semitic canard. Mm -hmm. I would only add one thing to that, and that is that we didn't define harboring anti-Semitic attitudes solely as agreeing with that stereotype. In order to, to register on the index scale, you had to agree with six out of the 11, which requires a broader definition of anti-Semitism. Um, I have two questions. First of all, just to I don't know if this is frivolous or not, but as a filtering question, did you ask people whether they knew what Jews were in Laos or in uh, Malaysia? Mm -hmm. We asked people whether or not they were favorable or unfavorable towards Jews, and as part of that question, if people didn't know, they, uh, they said so. And you do see in those countries, Laos uh, and, uh, and Vietnam, much higher percentages, as, as you do in Asia in general, much higher percentages of people who say they don't know on, uh, on that question, and also higher percentages of people who say that they don't know on the index statements when we ask them if they're probably true or probably false. Um, so uh, just to connect to the previous question uh, asked by uh, Michael Tuchfeld. Um So there are countries in which no Jews live, um, and in these countries, the perception that uh, Jews are more loyal to Israel could be influenced by whatever meager information they read in the news, which may be APAC or um, you know, very, very little information. Um, and I'm not sure that it's uh, an indication of anything for people who do not know Jews and do not know how Jews operate in, in a state, you know, when they are citizens of a state, to come to the conclusion that Jews are more loyal to Israel. That's not an, out, that's not an outlandish um, uh, conclusion to make from just reading the news if you don't know what Jews are and if you've never met a Jew in your life. Ignorance is no excuse for bigotry. You know, the fact that they don't know that much um, doesn't excuse the fact that they come to a certain conclusion, to a certain judgment. So there's enough knowledge or ignorance which still underlies a basic judgment. And the judgment is you can't trust Jews. You, you don't have to see them, you have to be with them, you don't have to know about APAC. A lot of the stuff, by the way, when you when you look up on the website is where do they get where do people get information today about Jews? They get it from television and the internet. And the conspiracy theories about Jews, you don't have to have them as your neighbors, you don't have to know them, all you need to do is plug in. And that builds um, that, that prejudice and that stereotype. Uh, Maya Schwader with the Jerusalem Post. Uh, I'm curious, was there, do you have any idea why in the English speaking world the margins were so much larger for not harboring anti-Semitic views? While we did look at factors that contribute to anti-Semitism, explaining why a particular country or a particular group harbors anti-Semitic attitudes was largely beyond the scope of this, uh, of this survey and I think is a subject for further investigation. Um, again, we don't, we don't know the exact answers and as uh, Jeff said, we need to follow, but um, I think in English speaking countries, uh, we find a level of education is, is greater, that impacts on it. Um, there's a greater openness, um, 
so that impact on it. I also think there's a level of sophistication that um, you, you know not to say and not to share certain attitudes. All of these play, but that's not, none of them are necessarily the answer as to why. Yes. It's also true that several of the, uh, of the English-speaking countries that we surveyed have significant Jewish populations, and countries that had significant Jewish populations tended to have lower index scores also than countries that did not. How much did the survey cost? A lot of money. <laughs> A lot of money. It's an expensive undertaking. So if you can elaborate a little bit more with Greece, because it's a staggering number. The finding in Greece, to be frank, was, uh, was, was disturbing. Uh, and I know that, that Abe has already had more conversations with them. The, uh, the Greek score was significantly higher than the scores either in Western or in, uh, in Eastern Europe. And it was the only Western country that really had a score that was comparable. To, uh, to scores in the Middle East and North Africa. It was uh, tied for 17th highest. I, I think there, partially, it's a reflection of the economic instability, of the political instability, of the growth of a political party, which is uh, not only anti-immigrant, but anti-Semitic, very clearly. I guess part of the good news is a recognition by the government. They banned the anti-Semitic, anti-immigrant party. Um, and uh, the fact that they realize uh, that they have a serious problem, so they're, out, they're not in denial that it exists, and they're reaching out. Um, so that's both the good news and the bad news. Um, did you see the Pew Research survey that was out yesterday, which mm -hmm. found um, that a much, I mean, which found, uh, first of all, it, it to sort of corroborate it, if it needs any corroboration, the finding about Greece. Mm -hmm. But it found that uh, sentiments against uh, Roma and about against Muslims in Europe are way higher than against Jews. So mm -hmm. does that change your perception? I mean, is, is it a case, do you think it's a case where there's just a lot of anti-foreign feelings which are now in Europe, for example, directed more against Muslims than they are against Jews? And should that change our perspective of the findings of this poll, at least in pertaining to Europe. Mm -hmm. Well, you'll find on the website uh, comparisons in favorable versus unfavorable ratings for, for Jews versus Muslims in, in different countries. We didn't test attitudes towards Roma. But the purpose of this survey was to get a benchmark look at, uh, at anti-Semitism around the world to test perceptions, to test uh, agreement with these 11 stereotypes. And we, we focused in more depth on that. I think that we'll obviously track some of these other measures going forward. But I think that while, while there are places where there is general anti-foreigner or anti-religious sentiment, as reflected by broader unfavorable attitudes towards other religions, I think that when you look at 26% globally who agree with six out of these 11 statements, or the equivalent of over one billion people in these, uh, in these countries, it's a pretty striking finding. Um, I think what, what we have found is that prejudice rarely stands alone. That is, um, it, it's, if people who are prejudiced usually um, not only don't like one, but they don't like a lot of others. It's the, usually the other. So we're, no, we're not surprised um, because the anti, again, there's, a, there's an anti-immigration, there's a nationalist movement, but we have unfortunately, historically, always been part of whatever anti. So, you know, we're part of, we're the victims in terms of immigration, even though Jews could have been there several hundred years. We're also part of the anti-nationalist. So that, um, yeah, these are, these are, New manifestations or old manifestations taking on political um, expediency, but the Jewish quotient, the anti-Semitic quotient, continues to be there. So let's say in some country it's more directed against Roma for the moment, that doesn't stop them from being anti-Semitic. It's still there. It doesn't vitiate, it doesn't replace, it's just an addition to. And a question from Religion News Service in Washington. Isn't the bar for anti-Semitism set too high? 
It seems as if you answer probably true to a mere three of these questions, you would be anti-Semitic. The answer is yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, we set it high uh, purposely. So we uh, talk from, from perspective of the ADL. We frequently get accused of um, creating or seeing anti-Semitism everywhere. And, and we're very conscious about the credibility. Um, in my personal view, <laughs> if somebody um, believes in three of, of those, uh, you know, he, there's a bias against, against Jews. You've got a problem with, with Jews. But um, we're not ready institutionally, statistically, to say you're an anti-Semite. So yeah, we've raised the bar, uh, the bar high. Um, uh, used to be five at one point uh, when, when we did surveys because we want to be careful uh, to make sure that we're labeling somebody who's bad who's really bad. Do you know what would be the percentage or the number of anti-Semites if you take out the Middle East and North Africa from the equation? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, yes, we, we have on the website the, uh, the combined uh, non-MENA uh, score. You'll be but, able to find it there. True, it's true to assume that, uh, given by the numbers that I have here, that the large bulk of the 26 percent. MENA, MENA represents 200 million. So that's one-fifth of the total, um, no, that's less than a fifth. Of, so, the, of the billion? Right. Yeah, oh. 200 million. On, so and so, would, so then it's not the, the largest. No, no. And the, the impact is not as great as one would have thought it to be. Um, and we have the numbers. And right. I, mm -hmm. There's a question from Latin America about Panama. Why, does Mr. Foxman have any theories as to why the numbers are so high in Panama? I have theories, but theories are just theories. Um, I think, again, the issue, we talked about Greece, economic uh, instability, you know, economic, economic issues, political instability. I think they all are a factor. Uh, to what extent, how significant is very difficult uh, to determine. Right. In, in Panama, as in Greece, the uh, statement with the highest percentage you say probably true is Jews have too much power in the business world at 81 percent. I think if you, if you would look at both those countries and look closely at the media, in the last year or so, or even two years, uh, the focus uh, in the media about um, finance, Jews in finance, accusations of Jewish control are um, out of proportion. And therefore, it does leave an impact. Question, how do your statistics compare to pre-World War II sentiments about Jews? My earliest research does not extend back that far. <laughs> I was too young then. <laughs> Another question. Isn't it a common thread that people who are anti-Jewish tend to be jealous of the success of Jews, and for that matter, jealous of successful people in general? Well, now we're going into the area of um, what are the reasons for anti-Semitism. There are a lot of theories. There are a lot of... Uh, suppositions. This is one of them that when you look for why, and unfortunately when we look for why, um, there are too many answers to the why, as I try to indicate in my remarks. Um, you know, to, to capitalist Jews are communist, to communist Jews are capitalist, to atheist, they're religious, to religious, they're atheist. So th there is no one theme that would explain throughout the ages uh, why anti-Semitism. Among the theories out there is jealousy among the theories out there is because the Jews gave the world the law and set moral standards. And so it, it's, it's one of the approaches to trying to understand it. Uh, I guess if we had the answers, we wouldn't have to do these surveys. That's right. And, and to give a less flip answer to the previous question about how these compare to the information. No, my answer was flip. <laughs> This is the first survey of its kind, and certainly the first survey with this breadth. So you don't have comparable data from before World War II. To compare to, the, uh, the foundational uh, sociological study that ADL originally based its questions on was done, I believe, in 1960. Not in 1960, then in the early 60s. Uh, so that's really where, uh, where this baseline comes from. Uh, an additional question, were there findings related to evangelical Christians? There are findings related to 
Protestant Christians as a whole, although no, no, uh, no findings related to evangelical Christians. We used to do it, we used to focus in years past on the surveys in America on the difference in the US, but we haven't done it recently. Mm -hmm. and, and you'll also be able to find on the, uh, on the website for countries that have more than one religion a breakout to show how respondents uh, replied to the questions country by country and even religion by religion. And you'll be able to look at countries that have higher percentages of uh, Protestant or born again Christians again at the website. If there are no further questions, we thank you all for joining us this morning. Uh, we'll stay available for private conversations afterwards, but this will end the press conference. Thank you all for being here. We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support Shalom TV with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double high or more, to the nonprofit organization Jewish Education in Media. Simply visit the Shalom TV website homepage and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check made out to GEM. To GEM, Post Office Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive on DVD with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.